So underneath the hood, we're pretty much done except for a big gaping generator hole. When they towed this thing in here, the tow truck driver put straps everywhere and uh, destroyed all the paint on the side. Because uh, you got to make sure you damage everything, right? The tow truck, when they hooked up, they actually grabbed the generator instead of the frame. So that's the biggest disappointment was this is a brand new generator with 58, 50 hours on it. And I think they destroyed it. I think I got my most important generator part here. This was quite a little bugger to get. That's cast aluminum right there. Not very often you have to change the entire bottom of a generator. So that was pretty much the last important part. Now I can rebuild a generator. So it's all coming together. Hopefully we'll be done soon. As I've tried to explain, it's a 8,000 watt quiet diesel generator. It's pretty much brand new. Uh, we're hoping that we can rebuild it and not buy a new one. Because that's a pretty big investment. Hoping. Let me get this thing set up and torn apart and we'll see. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, break this down into different modules. The good news is that you can still see coolant in there. So I'll take the uh, exhaust off, the radiator off, get this thing out of the way. Then I will point this out right here. This is your, fuel, uh, your governor right there. This is the uh, number one problem in all these uh, quiet diesels. This thing isn't really mounted very well. But eventually it pops loose and pulls one of these connectors off. Just a spade connector. And once that happens, it won't start ever again because it lost fuel control. The fuel shutoff's been disconnected. So uh, usually what I'll do is just get some zip ties and zip tie that thing down so it doesn't pop that off. It's a bad design. All right, so first thing, so let's start tearing this thing down. Because I got a whole bunch of parts here. You see that got damaged, that got damaged, that got damaged. I got a whole bunch of parts. What's that, Chad? What are the chances of it uh, working? I think pretty good. Better than 50 50 odds. Better than 50 50 odds, okay. So, just FYI, the, the cable broke. Yes. I know, it broke on me. Huh? It broke on me last time I used it. Did it? Uh -huh. Sure. Pretty sure. This really going back. James broke it. I didn't break it, I said it broke on me. Yeah, sure, run it. We'll go with that. Your fault. Not mine. Start. The, in, the beginning is the end. That's We're going to do this too, though. Just because. What are you going to do? I like my jeans. You're going to lock it down? I flipped that bar over so this thing decides to fail on you and stop after like four more inches down. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. I'd like to keep you uh, having uh, both your hands. I would also like that. So I'm going to pull the cap on the uh, the drain. Drain out all the coolant. What's left of it? I think there's going to be a lot, right? <laughs> You're saying? You know, I don't need this from you right now. You didn't see the giant puddle of coolant. Well, why that, would I uh, see it? When it came off the wrecker. You know? So I think... I disconnect the exhaust right there. What do you think? I think you disconnect the exhaust. That'll free that guy up. Uh, I'm guessing that's six millimeter. You gonna break it? You gonna break it with my electric ratchet? You think Milwaukee's that strong? No, but you can break it and then 
break, yeah. break the Milwaukee? Yeah. It's not going to crack it by itself. Oh. It actually wasn't that bad. Well, it probably only has like five hours on it. That's true. That's a good point, Chad. So yeah, there's almost probably no hours on this thing, so these exhaust... Uh... Well, you got to tell us, this isn't discovered yet. Probably still has a, the shipping oil on it. Oh, oh I can't believe you do that. You got it? Yeah. Oh, look at that. First part off. Almost done. Any luck finding that bolt? Yeah, it just rattled to the bottom. All right. Gonna... It didn't go inside the hole. Well, it couldn't have. You want to put the things back in there so we don't lose them? And the next thing is pull on the radiator. Radiator. Shroud. Right. That bolt does not go back in. That bolt is bad. You trying to do that thermostat housing? I wanted to be the person to open this and say, James, the block isn't cracked. The block is not broke. I want to hear that, actually. Um, it appears to be okay. So can we see okay? So this is just gasket material. Uh -huh. That is the water housing uh -huh. that is here. Right, we ordered that. So we just need to replace that, but in order to get to that, we got to pull the belt and we got to pull the water pump. Well, that's okay, because those are standard RV technician repairs, right? Yes. We don't have to be a diesel mechanic on those, or a generator mechanic. Man, this is nice. Take it for something new. brand new. <laughs> you know when you pull these things off, they're all like, I don't want to come off because I'm stuck. Just yes, like, I do know that. It just fell off. It's great. Are we doing a new water pump or no? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think I get a new water pump. Nobody told me to get a water pump. This hasn't turned in a while. There's a lot of rust on the bottom of the belt. Oh, the belt's bad. You can't have rust on the belt. No. Nope. Need a new one. <laughs> What? That's what happened? There's like 10 bolts on this thing. Why so many? Just in case. Now, I don't think the radiator's actually broken, but why would we not replace it? Oh, this thing, I don't think it's ever ran, dude. What? I don't think it's ever ran. Why is that? Well, our pump housing is so clean. <laughs> it's like brand new. Probably more debris in it just from uh, sitting there. The dust got in there. We need to get that bolt out. Which one? That one back. All right, well. It's behind the face of the motor. That is a problem. That's a problem for later. Right now we're just doing the teardown, Chad. Well, they got to be... You know what you didn't point out? Because huh. that was in the way. Usually th that thermostat sensor right there, that's a temperature sensor. Those things always go have a tendency of going bad. Yeah. And usually in order to get to them, everything has to come apart. So It's in the back of the generator. Right. So I'm not saying I've ever done it, but you can kind of cut a hole through the fiberglass shroud right there to, in order to get it out. I usually cut it here. <laughs> and then there. Really? I just normally just make a hole. Otherwise, you have to completely tear this whole generator apart like this. And they're like, why is it a 10-hour job? When it's a 20 hour part. Right. And this is like an air diverter dam anyways for cooling purposes. There's the drain I took off to get all that cooling out. Well, for that guy. Ooh, that guy's broke. Ooh, that broke. That 
I don't know if we ordered, I, I might have ordered that. Oil um, temperature sensor? Oil pressure. How are we looking the other way? So where are we at? Yeah, this is a nice little three-cylinder Kubota e engine. These things are like bulletproof, it seems like. But uh, our they oil are, pressure sensor is broken too. They are bulletproof, but they are not flatbed proof. Well, yeah, you can't hook up uh, a tow strap to drag a motorhome off onto a uh, onto a uh, flatbed. Flatbed. It's not designed to be a, a towing point. I think what happens is that it breaks off if you do that. Yeah, I, yeah, right about there. Uh, question so, is, did you find that bullet? Not yet. Okay. Sure, we'll find it. Found it. Chad found it. And look at that. Even though I'm not, an, we're not engine mechanics, we did cover up the manifold. You know, I have rebuilt engines. Chad's rebuilt engines, right? All right. Here's this is an expensive little bugger right here, Chad. Did you know that? The um, most expensive bugger. Well, I don't know if it's most expensive compared to the rotor stator. Rotor stator. That's not a bugger, though. You're right. That's a spinny thing. <laughs> ah, forgot my technical terms again. I know. That's the inverter controller. I've never condemned one because I didn't want to be responsible for condemning it. Right. All right. I have an important question I have to ask. Ask away. Do we want to disconnect the harness? This one, right? Well, this is all one piece harness. Well, let's see. Okay. This is disconnected. I'm overthinking this. All right, I'm overthinking this already, Chad. All right, I'm overthinking this. So I think we can take this off just by disconnecting this and a few of these leads over here. C1 is blue. All right, it's all coming together. Look at that. Now I just have to, uh, believe it or not, this is the generator right there. So this big old, big old box only exists for this little section right there, just to move that thing around. So we got the stator on the outside and the rotor on the inside. And I just have to disconnect the wires. The spinny thing. This little spinny thing. That engine just powers that thing. It gives us 8,000 watts. It's crazy how electricity works. No one knows. It's magic. Dude, why are you... Can you get it? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to get it, but... I uh, sure am going to try. Before having to take... The water pump housing out? Oh. Turn the motor off. Is that the timing cover then? Uh, it's gotta be. It comes all the way down. Base. Good. The crank. It's, it's a lot of it. Yeah. It's everything. Alright, so. Okay. Okay. Hear me out. I'm hearing. What do you think the chances are Bad. of just cracking them? Because I am like 85% bolt removed. Close. It's so loose. Why don't we focus on not disturbing things? Not disturbing things? Does that make sense? The only reason I'm really even taking this off is because uh, this housing got all bent up. And of course, we still have to do the uh, fan underneath. Well, while you uh, preoccupy yourself with getting my way again, I'm going to well, do something cheap. My name is Connor. Let's see how dirty this air filter is. Uh, 
Let's oh, I got smashed. I didn't get a new air filter. That's it. Trash the entire our, uh, generator. Can't afford it. The bond, beyond budget. Okay, so those gotta come out. So how do you wanna do this? Let's see. There's no dust. Things like brand new. Just bake it back into shape. It's fine. You can make it work. Make it work. Take it off already. Oh, what do you think All right, it is? Smash! <laughs> smash! So now we can see that fan, vital cooling fan, got hammered a little bit. That's part of it. Our, so our safety that, cage we need that piece. got hammered, and uh, that got hammered. But that's okay, because we're just trying to get down to the base. Once we're down to the base, then we can start rebuilding. Turn your motor. Are you cranky, my winky? I am cranky, the winky. Oh my god, I can actually feel the compression now. The swing back. Jeez, don't tip it over, James. I think it could be reused, possibly. I mean, look at it needs, that. It just needs a little epoxy. This little tiny thing, that's the generator. That's so it makes everything work. Very impressive. Yeah, you know what's the even more impressive thing is? What? That little thing's like $3,500. So, I was going to say like $2,500. <laughs> oh, well, when it's attached to the, the rotor and stator together, yes, it's an absurd amount of money. Hey, Chad. You know what we can do? Huh. It's on a cart. I can just cart the thing over to you. It's on? Yeah. Fifty-five. 55. It is. The, um, the, the, uh, out, the filler tube came no. loose, and the oil came out of it. I caught it quick, but it's caused problems with bushings or something inside needs to be redone. Okay, so with that, I couldn't tell you how much. But, <laughs> All right, so now we got it down to the beginning. Now I just have to start from here. So just transfer everything from here to the new one. The generator itself, dangling in space, looks fine. Our biggest concern is going to be, obviously, our oil pressure switch needs to be replaced. And getting that bolt out of and there. And getting that bolt out of there. Which looks like the timing cover has to come off in order to do that. No. Not ideal. Uh, they're probably on the cart. Alright, so it's already begun. We already changed out the access door. Next thing is we're going to move the fuel pump. We'll change out this cool little uh, capacitor that's on the battery hookups. Uh, we have new motor mounts because... I don't know if you guys saw it very well. One of our belts was broken. So now I get to go and look for parts in my part bin. Hopefully, I have all the parts we need, Chad. Hopefully. I don't think I have the pressure sensor unit, though. So while Chad swaps everything over, I'm going to straighten up our little bit of a shroud bin. And, uh, and this one, too. Right? Right, 
I know. Let me see that bolt real fast. So we got all new mo bolt mounts right there. This bolt just goes out from underneath and uh, mounts the motor there. Has all that play in there for uh, vibration. question is once we get it mounted will it be difficult to take to unbolt this are there any bottom bolts that we we'll need to get to uh, well it's been quite an ordeal you have to take the uh, fuel shutoff arm all apart in order to get to the last bolt on that timing cover we just need to pry it just a little tiny bit just to get that bolt out but this is uh okay we're okay we're okay we're all okay. we're okay chad we're okay i think we can get it right chad more any, any more oh my goodness so dangerous then i looked but i finally found the gasket that we need look at that chad We decided to do this before we put the uh, engine and generator into the case just in case the uh, housing was going to be in the way once it's bolted down. That's why we're doing it on the ground like this. Because we're animals. So it can be done. Just have to loosen up that uh, timing cover. Pull back your fuel shutoff actu actuator arm. But it's hooked up to spring so don't pull too hard. Don't break it. Break it, you bought it. You break it, you bought it. And we didn't even have to touch the adjustments on the uh, shutoff there. I think we saved the gasket. It's gonna work, Chad. It's gonna work. It's clean. All right, so Chad's gonna get this going here. So there's the old broken housing. There's gonna be the new one. And of course, the thermostat goes right there. I don't think there's probably anything wrong with this temperature sensor or the thermostat. But that's just the rule of thumb. You always replace that stuff, right? Especially when it's apart. When, when it's apart already. This is a very fragile gasket. Yeah, it's a, a metal gasket. It's got a red dot. Red dot means everything's good. Red means go? Sometimes. I don't think it's nice. not. Okay. Where it came from. I'm not either. It's a little scary. Don't drop that bolt. Is it bad? By all accounts, it's not good. Do you know I'm not a diesel mechanic either? I'm not? No. Oh, I heard. Sure, I go off in a lot from RV techs. Did you ever notice that? Not at all, not at all. And yet I still can't explain to people what I do. Other than, yeah, I fix RVs. Usually the easiest way to uh, shut off a diesel engine, because you can't shut off the uh, ignition, is to shut off the fuel. So this is a fuel shut off. We didn't adjust anything. There's a little actuator that uh, spins to actually shut off the flow. So it's all coming together. We're going to do an oil change anyways, because it's been sitting for a while. Even though the oil looked brand new. Well, that took a little bit longer than we planned on it taking. Well, the good news is my local uh, Cummins dealer, Onan dealer, had one oil pressure switch in stock. 
right there. Bam. Nice. You got that in there already, huh? I already got it in there. It's the yeah. one job I'm qualified to do in life. Everything else, I'm, oh, I'm underqualified. I do it anyways. Sounds about right. I guess. Right. Gotta put all the important zip ties back on, you know? I think we put the uh, fiberglass thing on. Fiberglass thing first? What? Fiberglass thing first? I think, I don't know. I don't know. That was like an hour ago that we did this. I can't possibly be asked to do stuff that I don't know. That goes there first. All right, let's uh. That piece is. Where is that piece? Yeah, like that. Yes, now just you can put like the that. in the thingy. Actually, in the clamp. Well, they're tightening it up yet. Then we can. Huh? What's that? Time for a new radiator. You can put the exhaust in. You want to do the exhaust? That's how we started the day. Oh, uh, thinking get this inverter piece back in. That way we can get the coolant reservoir bottle in. They got them there here, isolators. Huh, makes sense, because it's uh, like that. Bent? Did you just tell me to get bent? Yes. J5. Johnny Five? Is he alive? So we got some new door panels. The uh, insulation kits for him. I did not get all new panels. I got a lot of them. In my book, that's a win. We got all these push washers right here. Push on, look at that. Dude, it's upside down. Oh no, well it's too late now. A little bit of body. Fill them up before you go-go. You want a funnel? Possibly. All good? Well, it was about a gallon. I don't know my mass very well, but I think four quarts is like a gallon. Yeah, it's always confusing on this one because there's hose kinks, but that's just a fill hose to the radiator. You have the upper radiator hose there and the lower one right there. So that doesn't matter if it gets kinked, only when you're filling it. Well, you got high hopes on this, Chad? Yeah. Yeah? Well, it's, gonna, it's going to at least turn. It'll crank? All right. All right. I'm gonna try the fuel pump first. Well, that part worked. It's sucking fuel. Are we good? We're not sucking air, right? I don't think so. Yeah, this hose in there pretty good. Okay, um. Hold on. I'm gonna turn the bre breakers off. Put hands on the case. 
I'm not trying to have this thing rattle off a little bit. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Think we're making power? I mean, I know we're not because the breaker's off. Ooh, it's power right there. Ooh, that's power right there. We got ourselves a new generator going. Hot dog. Dang. Dang. Wow. <laughs> All right, we good. <laughs> I mean, we didn't run it very long. I don't see any oil leaks yet. And of course, this is why you can't get that sensor right there. Because all you can usually do... Yeah, you can't usually get a tool back in there, so you have to do it from this side. And the oil pressure switch for sure. Man, that would be a pain to do right now. You'd be cutting a hole for sure. Well, I don't think it'll be that hard. Okay, we I got plans. We need to tap this whole thing this way if we can. Or just push on it. A little less, a little less, a little more. A little less. A little bit more. You see it in there? No, not yet. Might as well just put all of it in. Yeah, we're gonna have to uh, get all the air out. And we'll have to bench test it a little bit, make sure it's actually not leaking before we, you know. Stuff it in a coach that you can't get it out of? Yes. Look at that, you can see the level right there. It's perfect, it's perfect. You're perfect, Chad. I think I'm very pleased with the way this turned out. Even though there might be a little bit of damage right there. That's so. very acceptable amount of damage right there. Wow. It's been accepted. I think I'm ready now. Prime, 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 prime. Let this run a little bit, make sure we don't have uh, any any leaks now that we have what air coolant. What we're gonna have to do is we will have to scoot it because the exhaust is dumping out right on top of the cart. Oh yeah, that's right. Should kind we do that first? Off. It's kind of closed off, so we don't want to overheat it. Yeah, just right there, we can yeah. see it. Oh man. What's hey, look at that. It's Problem fine. solved. Firing. Firing. Three, two, one. Firing when it's ready. <laughs> I mean, tools get left places. Just, yeah. got, just got knocked off. Well, it seems to be pretty quiet. What? Probably just cart. All right, well with that, I just have to clean up a big mess. Why'd you make such a big mess? You made a big mess, Chad. It's progress, it's progress. Look at that. Finish up paint. Ready to go. Put this thing in, and bow, it's done. You know, they said it couldn't be done. Everybody uh, online said this thing was garbage. There's no reason to put money into it. Well, and I said, the these things are expensive. Very expensive. They say it's a dollar a watt. 8,000 watts. You can do that. <laughs> it's a long day. My camera's almost dead. So, there it was, an Onan, an Onan 8,000 watt quiet diesel. We had to rebuild. I don't know if you can see uh, all the parts laying on the ground right there. A huge shout out to uh, East Valley RV Specialist there in 
Apache Junction, Arizona, especially Cody, working the parts there. It's not sponsored, but could not have done this without them rushing these parts for me. I uh, really do appreciate it. Should give them a chance. They, uh, they do good work. At any rate, I'm pretty excited. Generator's done. Thanks for watching. Now, of course, for some of you who may not be following along, this generator is going into that Allegro Red that, we re that we're rebuilding. This is the one that got crushed uh, when the front end got, got damaged. So they said it couldn't be fixed, but it's fixed. There wasn't much wrong with it. It's mostly cosmetic. Okay, that thermostat housing was broken. Why is it all wet over here? What you gonna do over here? Uh, try to wet sand this thing. Wet sand it. Ooh, you know what wet sanding means? Uh -huh. It means painting okay. is soon. Yep. Tomorrow, maybe. Manana. Yeah. Tomorrow. See all right, I'm holding it to you. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Always tomorrow. Tomorrow starts painting. Hey. I brought you the old front cap over here. So we need to know how it, uh, how the colors are. Same guy that's putting. Caught you eating donuts. Yeah, generator rebuild. You don't need time for donuts. We're always time for donuts, especially free donuts. Best kind of donuts. Juanito's supposed to help us? Si! Oh my man! Hey! Hey! You know, I can edit that to make it look like there's a lot. You fill up of water right now? <laughs> That's cheating. Alright. The oil filter right there. Yeah, it's an extra. It's like you've never done an oil change in a diesel generator before, James. I have. But it's so much easier with a case gun. <laughs> I don't think it is. I mean... This thing's so tiny without that big uh, surround around it. <laughs> it's so tiny and little. Alright. This isn't labeled well. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. It's a good thing we're doing that. Look at that. That's high voltages right there. That could have caused some problems. Could have blown stuff up. Yeah, that is the. Uh, That's the technical term. The windings, the fancy part. Rock chair. Just stripped it. Yeah, That's line two. It's only T one, two, T two, T two terminators. That's uh, Skynet. They're coming for you. Oh, you bugger, you. Um, I said bugger. It's totally G-rated. Is that right? G-money rated? Okay. Okay, what? Problem. No. The problem is you're blocking the camera. The problem is... Tamales. Tamales. Elotes. Elado. Oh, back up, back up, back up. N-I-T-E-N-E, the warrant to the G.